So watch, therefore, because you do not know the day nor the hour when these things will take place, and that question will be answered, by the way. So Jesus basically says, in Mark, he said, no one knows the day or the hour. And then he says the same thing post-resurrection, Acts 1, 7. He says, the times and seasons are set by the Father alone. This is the point of Jesus in these parables. So what can we say about this? So Jesus is the bridegroom, and that's also brought out in Matthew 9 and Mark 2. Jesus is the bridegroom, which, by the way, is a so-called Yahweh text here being used by Jesus because in the Old Testament, Yahweh is a bridegroom. So you have Isaiah 54, 62, Ezekiel 6, Hosea 2. So Jesus, as Yahweh's primary agent, ultimate agent in this case, because he's not only his agent, he is the son. So once again, Jesus identifies himself with the Yahweh of the Old Testament, not because he is literally his own father, but because he obviously said, John as well in the Gospel of John, if you see me, you see my father. So what is the oil? So if you go to commentaries, all this I'm showing you here. So the oil usually is interpreted as talents or good deeds. That is, I think Jesus here is, what have you done for me, Johnny come lately sort of deal, as we will see with the other parable. So he wants you to be ready. It's interesting that despite their, their appearance as virgins here, these ten virgins, half of them, five of them, are foolish. Why? Because they never made adequate preparation for the coming king and his coming kingdom. And this is interesting because it reminds me of 1 John 2.19. So although we may say we're Christians, we may look Christian or virgin here, we may look holy, right? The meaning behind the metaphor of virgin here, by the way, is holiness, right? Godliness, cleanliness. But half of them are not what they seem to be or what they say they are. It reminds me of 1 John 2, 19. They went out from us, says John, but they did not really belong to us. Isn't that a scary proposition? And then comes the scariest verse in probably the whole of the New Testament, Matthew 25, 12. Now, that reminds me of the scariest passage in all of the New Testament, probably. Matthew 7, same thing here, right? Five of the virgins knock on the door, and what's the response? They're knocking, Lord, and he says in Matthew 25, 12, I never knew you. Now, that's pretty scary. Throughout all their virginal lives, let's call it, right? A virgin keeps herself a virgin, yet Jesus says, Never, never, ever. The theme here is prepare and proceed, right? You're not only supposed to be prepared. Remember, these are virgins. They're all virgins. They all have lamps. So they're, they're prepared in a certain way that even the foolish ones, they, they have lamps, but they don't have enough oil. So it's not like they're totally unprepared. It's just also a matter of preparation, perception, knowing that this will take a while. And that's why I call this uh, teaching the Messi so-called Messianic pause or delay because uh, when this was written probably 40 years, some say 50 years after the crucifixion maybe, they can see the early Jewish Christians. So they're wondering, wait a minute, what happened? They're getting here the information from Jesus himself, perhaps looking back when they're putting this on paper, as we say today. The truth is that Jesus did tell us this was going to take who knows how long. And the shout there, it's in verse 6, right? The shout, that sounds to me like the trumpet. And again, we'll see in 1 Thessalonians 4, Paul gives us information about an actual audible sound from a trumpet that we'll hear. Maybe that's it. All right, let's continue to the next parable of the talents. And Jesus is not talking about the organization. Classic uh, passage of the Jehovah's Witnesses. So what can we make of this? Well, so the master, like the bridegroom, is delayed indefinitely after a long time. And again, that goes back to the previous parable in chapter 24, verse 48. So after a long time, the delays, in, this is the, I think this is the thematic, the overall core message here of Jesus, that there's this delay. They do not know. They thought they knew the Jews, right? In the Old Testament, it wasn't very clear to them that there would be a delay. Everything was supposed to happen. The day of the Lord, the day of Yahweh, Jehovah, however you want to say it, by the way, was supposed to be, you know, instant. The Messiah shows up. We know who he is. 
the son of David, the descendant prophesied in passages like uh, 2 Samuel 7 and so on, the son of Psalm 2 and so on, but there's a delay. The slaves, note, the, note in this parable that the slaves are sort of partners in the affairs of the master because they will share in his profits. He gives them these talents and what they do with it, they'll share it. Very business-like uh, transactional here. The next point there, the ta so what are the talents, like the oil and the lamps, right? To me here, they're simply the skills or mental prowess God has given each and every one of us. In other words, what's your earning power for God in his coming kingdom? Anthony likes to say, what talent do you have that God has not given you, right? So we all have talents. We're all born with a natural talent. We have to sometimes, through our lives, we have to hone and find. So the talents here are simply that, God-given skills and mental prowess. And then Jesus is like a thief. First Thessalonians 4, he comes like a thief in the night. And that's a reference to Jesus coming to the world as a thief. Not to his church, not to those who are awake. We have to be alert, says Paul in 1 Thessalonians 4. So it's the world that will be caught unawares, the unbelieving world, by Jesus as a thief. And note that our words will condemn us. The lazy slave, the bad slave here says, admits, confesses. And that's why he's judged the way he is. He himself, or she herself, confesses to what they were lacking, what they did not do. And again, the theme here is preparation, but now Jesus adds performance. So God has given you all these talents. So in Luke 19, as you see there, the parable of the 10 minas here, uh, the master here, called the no a nobleman, calls 10 slaves. He gives them 10 minas. So he gives them the same amount is the point here. Whereas in the Matthew 25 parable or story, they're given a different amount each. So... What exactly that might mean, not sure. <laughs> and uh, as you can see there, the nobleman tells him in the Luke story, engage in business until I come back. So there's that uh, delay thing again. And then when he comes back, there is a faithful slave, faithful servant once again. So we had uh, three parables starting in 24, making the same overall theme. The moral of the tale are simply this. There are three Ps. Be prepared, be productive, and be perceptive. So there's a prayer. And Moses says, to you a thousand years is like the passing of a day or like a few hours in the night. Also echoed in the second letter of Peter, as you know. So there's this delay. That's the main point here, of the delay. We're trying to understand that in terms of it's in God's time, and God's time is different from our time. Quote, as you see here from Davies, in his commentary of Matthew, he says, persecutions and hatred were not to be taken as indications that Jesus' mission had failed or that his followers were rejected by God, but as the inevitable expression of evil in a violent world which God was about to transform into the kingdom of heaven. So the early Christians had to explain the pause. They had to explain the delay of the kingdom of God. Remember, this is the central parting of the ways between Judaism and Christ of what became Christianity. Really, that, that was the problem, that this guy calling himself the Son of Man, the Messiah, promising the kingdom, coming, preaching the kingdom, but he didn't bring the kingdom, did he? Instead, the Romans killed him as a would-be insurrectionist, a criminal. No way that was our Messiah, right? Most of them said. And they're trying to explain it, I think. They're trying to, the, the gospel writers, looking back decades, uh, 40, 50 years or so, looking into their scriptures again, why the kingdom had not been established. Why Psalm 2 had not taken place, where the sun there is shattering the nations and so on. So I think this is why we have so many parables about the delay, what what we call the delay or the messianic pause, as some scholars call it. The son of David, that Messiah was supposed to bring it, subjugate the nation, Psalm 2. As the apostles themselves asked once again, remember just before Jesus ascends in Acts 1-6, restore the kingdom to Israel. And then Jesus will follow these parables with the judgment of the nation story, which is strictly speaking not a parable. Although it has elements of a parable, the people, the individuals from the nations, described as sheep and goats, of course there's a shepherd, 
It has elements, but it's strictly not a parable. I think Jesus goes back to his prophecy of Matthew 24. It's sort of a truncated Matthew 24 prophecy of the end of the age, the parousia, but then what happens immediately after. 